One of the great things that the unions did yeah. was in America was to bring around the, the 40 hour working yeah, week. Yeah. That. But that's not true at all. No? No, Henry Ford brought that out. And he brought it out to be competitive because he wanted workers. Right? So that ah, was, that eight was actually. Hour shifts because he was running 24 hours a day. Yeah. So he's running eight, eight, and eight. But, yeah. he, but he, he wanted workers. So he introduced the 40 hour work week to compete with other employers to attract the staff. Oh. So left to their own devices, a private enterprise, I think, can deliver things. But I think that also left to their own devices, private enterprise can sometimes be predatory. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of that, though, what, what about dollar value of uh, Bitcoin at the moment? It hit a new high. Right? It has. It reached the uh, $100,000 mark as far as Australian dollars are concerned. Okay. And uh, it's, it's about gone 14 US, that. $14 US, dollars yeah. US. <laughs> I think the last I looked at it, it was about 100, it was floating between 102, 104,000 um, Aussie, Australian yeah. dollars. Um, yeah, interesting space that. Uh, it's kind of been expected that mm. it would do that. There are those who are saying that it'll also go to 100,000 US. Um, it's it's an interesting space, this. Uh, yeah, what can you say? It, it's <laughs> well, watch be, this space. Well, maybe, it, yeah. it's, adoption is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Cryptocurrency is becoming more and more uh, standardized, accepted. Um, it's not seen as fringe anymore. Sure. Um, I think once it's seen, once, <laughs> believe it or not, I think once they attach it to a debit card, that's going to be when it gets mass sort of use, it'll open up. Well, they've more. already started doing that. They have. But, but have. One, of the, one of the issues that was brought up to me by uh, somebody I call my, my sort of guru, my, my whiz kid, um, who had said to me that he uses all sorts of different cryptos mm -hmm. and that what he was doing was he was borrowing Australian dollars against the value of the crypto right for those of you that know a little bit about taxes when you borrow money against an asset it's not a taxable event but apparently there was a ruling made by the australian taxation office that they would deem that to be a constructive sale and you'd have to pay capital gains tax hmm. even though it's a loan now i'm not exactly sure how that's going to work then because then when you do go to repay the loan do you then get a reba I'm, I'm just not sure how no, that works, but I'm no very idea surprised it, it hasn't been challenged. I'm really surprised it hasn't been challenged. It indicates to me mm -hmm. that just by the stroke of a pen, if they can't get you directly, they'll do it some other way. No doubt about it. I, I look, and it comes down to crypto. Is it currency or is it an asset, right? I mean, that's that's the thing, you know, that's... Yeah, and that's what I have a really hard time with. Um, you know, when people have asked me in the past, you know, what do you think of Bitcoin? I'm like, oh, what the hell is Bitcoin? It's going to be worth 20 cents. Well, what am I bloody wrong? <laughs> um, but the thing was, I, I, I thought four thousand dollar Bitcoin was expensive. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I remember those days, and if it was just, I remember some? somebody saying to me, "Well, why don't you just put ten grand in or something? Mm. You know, just for a laugh. Why you know, you'd, you'd you know, put that on a horse race. Ah, you know, at least my horse got a chance at winning. I'm not <laughs> betting on these digital. What is it? And again, just I couldn't understand. Is it a currency? Is it an asset? Yeah. Is it what's its purpose? What the hell does it do? And so I never did. Well, that ten grand, I think, would be worth like eighty million or something. Yeah. Yep, easy. So, you know, I should have bought that Powerball ticket. I, I just, <laughs> you know. But you can't live life like that when you're in the No, you can't. You, you can't. But, yeah. but this is the thing. I, I don't know. Is there is there a saturation point in the crypto market? I mean, how many how many new cryptos can just keep being developed? And, and well, to my purpose? mind, I, I think they'll, it'll end up like being like the banks. I think they'll end up being four major ones and that's it. And I think the rest will peter away. That's, that's my thought. Well, it, it's interesting though, isn't it? Because you could then see the reverse fragmentation before the... Before the Reserve Bank in the, in the United States started up in 1913, and and prior to you know the green banks, uh, green banks and all that sort of stuff, each bank in America actually issued its own currency, mm. uh, and it was subject to you know things like fraud and counterfeiting and etc. But then they decided to have a standardised currency. So the idea of you know the, the, the digital space is kind of acting like the Wild West okay. before, where banks could issue their own currency, mm. and then its value would be determined by whether people would accept them or not, yep. and at what value they'd accept them. So this is interesting because it, it has, in, in, a, in a funny kind of way, it's actually put competition into that market. What, what I've been doing researching lately is there is a project that is providing the liquidity for whatever currency people want to 
uh, trade in. Okay. So in cross-cultural payments and uh, cross-border payments, I should say, mm-hmm. um, if you want to say, let's say Shaquille wants to pay you the value of 100000 Australian and you want to receive that in US dollars, whatever, yep. this project can match those across the blockchain. Oh, so okay. that you receive the amount that you should in your currency, you are giving the amount that you should in your currency without this two, three, four day uh, time Window, frame yeah, yeah, yeah. where those currency values can, can yeah. change. Oh, okay. Pairs. And I want to say this, if Shaq, if you feel like that, I'm, I'm open to it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm worried like... about what it is, Derek, that you think Aaron could have possibly done for me <laughs> that, uh, that I'm going to give him this money. <laughs> oh, but but again, so. what you've just expressed there, though, I, I still get quite confused by this because I'm not sure what problem that solves. I mean, you can go to currency you know, dealers or like, mm. you know, we all know through certain brokers that you can just transact. Just, I mean, yeah, But it gets rid of a lot of admin costs. It gets rid of a lot of liquidity issues as well. What liquidity issues are there in the FX market, especially the Aussie US? Well, okay, let's say I go overseas and I bring back, I don't know, how many uh, Indonesian rupees, right? And I want to transfer that into uh, Aussie dollars. Or I want to go to Indonesia and I want those rupees in cash here in Australia. It's too difficult to do, right? Which local branch has, you know, $10,000 worth of rupees uh, that they can give me before I go out on the on the plane and yeah, go. But, but, sorry, but, but, you've, but you didn't say cash. You said that they were going to settle these transactions through the blockchain by finding matching matching people. Correct, that, but if that you already have your own digital wallets, Shaq, if you have your own digital wallets, it's yeah. easier to access this across borders as well. All you need to do is being hooked up to the internet or online. Mm. Yeah. I, as Look, I, I understand it. Oh, yeah, so maybe you're right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I accept what you're saying. I just on the surface, I I can't see the. Let's go bigger then. Let's go on a bigger scale. So let's say you know a big mining corporation wants to pay ten million dollars to Aaron, <laughs> you know, to a trucking industry that creates certain trucks for them to mine yeah. over here, right? Yep. And they need to do that. They need to do it quickly. Those cross border payments are done a lot more efficiently and in seconds, as opposed to days. But that's the whole thing. It it, it doesn't take it, it doesn't take days in the first place, unless it's taking days because of regulations that have been put there because corporations and people have asked for them to be. So this is the thing. Like, like th- There are ways to get around it already. Mm. You can already get around it. The blockchain may be able to do that cheaper than the existing ways of doing it, but I'm, I'm just – and again, because I know I'm a technophobe, I'm really lost to see. The blockchain can also authenticate that transaction. It's there. It, 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 it's there for people to watch and it's and, transparent. And audit. How it, much it, it can be audited? How much fraud do you think there would be between BHP trying to make a payment to I don't know TNT? Oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Again, I, I think I'm not. I'm not trying to shit all over cryptos. There's obviously a future in them. I just really struggle to to see when people say to me, "It's got this benefit, that benefit." I'm, I I don't understand it. And, and people say to me, "Okay, well, what about micro payments? You're sending money to Africa, mm. you know, and I, I want to send ten dollars to Africa, and now it's a lot cheaper." Yeah, it is. But when they try to get the money out, and they try to convert it from a crypto back into real currency, they've got to pay fees. So when people say, "Oh, well, this FX transaction mm. is going to be cheaper." In your digital wallet, yes, it is, but only if you're going to keep it all digital and spend it digitally. As soon as you want to convert it back into a fiat currency, which is more widely accepted, you've got to pay the fees. But what this is saying, this project that I'm alluding to, is saying that it can match whatever fiat currency you want, if that's what it is, right? It can match even a CBDC. Oh, so it's not, it hasn't got the conversion. It doesn't have to do that, but it, it matches that exactly to whatever value you want. So if you want to receive it in, in fiat, you can receive it in fiat. If you want to receive it in crypto, you can receive it gotcha. in crypto, this kind of project. Oh, I think the easy, easy answer for this is, Shaq, if you could just watch uh, maybe uh, the Crypto Hour of Power, it's Tuesday at 1 <laughs> o'clock on Edge Radio Australia. Uh, so, can help you out. You never know, right? Powered by Orange Brick Road now. Yeah. Right. Come on. <laughs> Was, was this our was this our friend that said boo and then had to clarify that he, he wasn't booing at us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. trying to scare yeah, us. The one. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll make an effort to watch your show. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's a fantastic show. It really is. And I've been I've been every week. I'm learning more and more. It's it's, it's it is to me because you know I came in with when it came to crypto. I was obviously it's that magic internet money. I, you know I didn't feel the trust and whatever. And uh, I. I still am hesitant purely and simply because I'm hesitant with most financial decisions. I, I like to think about before I go and do it. 
But uh, no, honestly, it is. It's very eye opening, and the more information, whatever system it is, whether it's fiat, whether it's you know crypto, where whatever it happens to be, the more education you've got, the better decision you can make. So easy peasy. All right. Do we have any questions from our viewers? It's been very quiet today. We it has. Heard, well, heard very much, Travis has we? been in charge of that, and I haven't seen Travis on the screen Travis for quite some screen. time. No. Um, I don't no, I'm still here. You guys were going for it, so I didn't want to interrupt. So because well, yeah. it was like really interesting. So a couple of things, yes, regarding the space where crypto is going to land in the future. I think the CBDCs uh, inevitable. We, we can't stop it. If the government says we're going to use it, we're going to end up using it. I think that's where crypto has really done fall into their own. They're going to be effectively the cash of today. So it's it's just one of those tough ones. It's going to be hard, and I think people really do need to learn how to use the new digital cash, if you will. Yep. Okay. Uh, you've, brought, you've brought that point up before, and I, um, I didn't actually agree with you at the time, but... I think you might be onto something, to be absolutely frank. Mm. Uh, I'd love to keep cash alive. I really, really would. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, but the it's issue difficult. the issue is there, isn't it, that when we switch from gold to cash mm. and go back in time, yep. and then we switch off the gold standard, thanks to, to Nixon mm. and, and the end of World War II, uh, people are like, well, what, what's this piece of paper then? So can I wind the clock back? You said, okay, we knew Nixon, obviously, Close off the the gold standard, right? Yeah, seventy two, seventy three. Why do I always think it's seventy? Maybe because I'm seventy two. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> um, but okay, you said about the end of World War Two. So what's the link there? I'm sorry. Well, what had happened, like you know, without boring everybody with economic history, mm -hmm. what basically had happened was the U.S. the Bretton Woods system had basically what all the currencies, what the major currencies of the world had agreed to do was to peg their currency to the US dollar, and the US dollar was redeemable for gold. Sure. Mm -hmm. There was obviously more cash in existence than there was gold, but that's that's what had happened. But okay. Because it was it was at a fixed price, mm -hmm. what happened was that, that people were actually able to acquire US dollars for less than their actual value. Okay. So this was brilliant for a lot oh, of these absolutely. countries. Absolutely. Yeah. Then it wasn't so good when the reverse happened, when all of a sudden people went, hmm, hmm. actually those US dollars are overpriced. Let's get rid of them. Right. And so the French, being French, <laughs> said, nah, and just started dumping all of this US currency and trying to get gold. And the rest of the world said, well, yeah, we should do the same, actually. Hmm. And so all of a sudden you had this massive outflow of gold from the US and Richard Nixon said, no, 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 I'm, I'm just going to. Suspend all that. No, no, no. No more gold for you, for you lot. Really? So on the, on the bottom of US currency, it actually used to say redeemable for, re redeemable on demand for gold or silver or whatever. Yeah, I've seen some old notes that had, had that on there. Yeah, okay, and uh, it, was, it was a promissory note, whereas now it's not. Now, people, I understand why people say this, but people say that currency now has no value at all. It's not It's not entirely true. I understand why they're saying it. Um you know, people people say the banks are just conjuring up money out of thin air. Well, they just print it. Yeah. yeah, which again is is sort of true, sort of not. I think, you know, in a more abstract way, it's not true. But I'm not going to bore you all with with monetary theory. But uh, look, an alternative that people actually have some trust in, I think, is important. And at the end of the day, why why do we have inflation? When you, you look back and you you say, I mean, somebody showed me a food menu from uh, from the oh. US from like the 50s and it was like a big mac was like you know five cents or something yeah so why do we have inflation the way that we have and why do people think it's a good idea well derek you're the expert why do we have inflation <laughs> <laughs> why do we have inflation well <laughs> again well why do we have it recently oil prices were demanding that they mm -hmm. were getting more costly to move that had an effect ripple effect across the, the nations sure. and businesses how they do and cross borders and that sort of stuff i wasn't actually really genuinely okay, asking you for okay, right. but i appreciate but the, the that is, maybe we, we should do something like that one but we what we talk about it right it's, it's mm. like it's like a woman you just can't cannot keep them happy right <laughs> well certainly that's been my experience with them right <laughs> <laughs> they complain that's not enough inflation yeah right that was the complaint for the last uh, 10 years that inflation was just too low then, i never understood that i right, don't exactly then all of a sudden inflation goes too high hmm. And then you say to people, okay, well, do you want prices to go down? 
Do you want deflation? Because sure. everyone's that everything's gone, gone. Yeah, of course you're happy, Inferno. But if I knew you in person, you probably wouldn't be because I tend to have that effect on females, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, ah. but people don't want prices to come down. Like even right now, people mm. actually don't want prices to come down. That's the whole thing. Like people complain about, you know, the cost of living going up. Mm. But I think if you actually ask them, I don't really think people want prices to come down. They just want their money to go up. Now, everybody well, who's owning houses at the moment don't yeah. want that deflation. No way. Yeah, exactly. So and what will end up happening, though, yeah. if, if, if inflation was to continue on, our grandkids, or if I ever have any children, their children, by the time they go to buy a house in Balcata, it'll be $30 million for a two-bedroom house. That's right. Yeah. But they'll all be earning a million dollars a year. No, but okay. But will if you they, look, if you talk, they? because wages haven't increased over the last no, seven exactly. decades. And if you look, you look at okay, wages what a, haven't. No. If you look at a wage, okay, you look at the wages of say my my parents, for example, okay, and you look at the proportion of their wages per year compared to the price of the house, the the ratio is completely different now, completely different. But, but that's my whole point. Mm, that, 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 yeah, that's the issue. Yeah. Exactly. People complain about that all the time. Right, you get this old people. Mm. Oh, when I was a kid, you know, I was able to work at McDonald's, you know, one hour a month and put myself through university. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can't do that now, mm. right? We've got more people. Yeah, housing prices have gone up, and people say, it's like Travis will say, well, they should just release more land, and they should build more houses. Yeah, it sounds good. We all we all pretend that that's what we want. But if you own houses, you don't want that. No. If you own your own home, that's the last thing you want is for the government yeah, to come okay, in but, but, and okay. make it easy for other people to get houses, which therefore decreases yours, yeah. the amount of buying pressure on your property. But the other who uh, wants that to happen? The other extreme is then okay. You have more homelessness. You have more crime. You have more people who are doing things to steal. Yeah. Uh, and then your that's value right. of your neighbourhood goes down because you've got crime on the streets now. Nobody wants to live there. Right, and, and see, again, this is why I, I say to people, it, you take a political position, I don't care if you're on the left or you're on the right. Mm -hmm. it, the, the politicians are full of shit, okay? The right-wingers will say, hey, no problems, we'll just lock them up, and, you know, increase sentences. Mm -hmm. That'll solve that issue. The left-wingers go, well, you know, no, we, we can't do that. We're going to show them love and just let the crime rates go up. Kumbaya. Right? And then what do you do? Well, you're rich. You go, okay, well, fine. I'll, I'll you know, take car services. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll do all these other things, which creates jobs. You know, it, it, you can't win with this. But what I'm saying is that people people are looking for a solution from government. Mm -hmm. And just in my experience with government, right, I, I can't keep women happy. I certainly can't keep government happy. And what I've worked out is I shouldn't rely on either. No. Right? No, okay. Yeah. Okay. You need okay. to take into yeah. your own hands. I will say okay. for the women, for the women that are watching, thinking I'm on some chauvinistic thing, I'm not being chauvinistic. If you guys had a dollar for every time I was chauvinistic, you'd have about seventy-seven cents. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Oh Do dear. the math on that. I won't, I won't, actually, be, I won't but, be around for oh, uh, the show again, will I? That's yeah, it. That, that is, my appearance. That is one of the worst statements you've ever made. <laughs> full stop. But okay, you know what? Here's the thing: we're all adults here. And before we were talking about the votes, right? The votes from these referendums, this and that. When people get to go in there and privately vote on what they really think, okay? And we're all sick of this woke crap. Everyone's sick of this woke crap. Yeah, there's one really simple word when it comes to woke: it's no. You just keep saying no. Now, why I mention that is because we've just said about we're making the sexist jokes or the whatever misogynistic stuff. It's a joke. And remember when we used to be able to just pull a Mickey out of each other and we all got along. I think all of us want that back, okay? Now, I don't want people being rude to others, but, okay, I expect to be able to make a mother-in-law joke. I expect that, okay? I expect that someone's going to make a fat joke about me or a ball joke, right? Not I think I've yourself. already made all. I think oh I've ticked all those boxes oh, today, haven't I? You had me at hello. <laughs> right there at the door. But it's, it's, that's friendship, right? And that's good relationships when you're able to be comfortable with each other. And in a world where you can't make silly jokes about gender or whatever, yeah. um, that, that takes so much of our power away. So, well, I agree. And, and I, I expect, I expect people to take the piss out of me. Yeah. I'd be disappointed if they don't. I mean, damn right. There's certainly yeah. enough material there, <laughs> you know. Cool. But, well, but in just, your shirt alone, boom, boom. boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ducky boy. Um, <laughs> but no, look. I think again. I I think that that people are relying too much on government to try Agreed. to solve all these problems mm. and not recognise that the government was originally probably the cause of these problems. That's right. 
But I think people have to think things through a little bit. So I'm more of a libertarian kind of person. I think government should not be around, go away, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But I, I think you've got to be pragmatic enough to understand that if there really wasn't a government and we didn't have safety regulations and we didn't have all these things that we mm -hmm. take for granted, that may not necessarily be the kind of world you want to live in. Oh, I don't. Wild West. Right. No, I don't agree. I, I, I just driving down the road the other day, and I see all of the, the protective gear and the, the, all that kind of carry on stopping the workers, like all of this, just over the top. Oh. No, no, I, no ab absolutely, Fair absolutely. Enough. That's too much. Yeah. But the flip side is what that you shouldn't have any. No, no. So, just, so you, you, you balance. You, life is life is about balance, right? Exactly. Okay? And we but, don't but, have. But how, but how would you balance that? Well, okay. see, the question is: Do we want government to do it, or mm -hmm. people, for example, they say, "Oh, one of the great things that the unions did mm -hmm. was in America was to bring around the, the forty-hour working yeah, week." Okay. But that's not true at all. No, no. Henry Ford brought that out, and he brought it out to be competitive because he wanted workers. Right, so that ah, was that eight was actually, hour shifts because he was running twenty four hours a day. Yeah. so he's running eight, eight, and eight. But, yeah. but he he wanted workers, so he introduced the forty hour work week to compete with other employers to attract the staff. Oh. So left to their own devices, a private enterprise, I think, can deliver things. Mm. But I think that also left to their own devices, private enterprise can sometimes be predatory. No doubt and so it. you do need to have, as you said, that balance. Mm. But I think that that balance has to be driven by people and not by government because government just makes a pig's breakfast of it.